In this update, we'll report on the new tests and the regulatory hurdles SpaceX faced to set a record time for Starship testing. SpaceX seems determined to get the Starship back on the launch pad as soon as possible, as the company has just set a record time for performing tests on the crafts so soon after it launched on November 18th. Some speculate that these accelerated efforts could point towards another Starship launch happening earlier than anyone expected. Let's take a closer look at these rapid tests and if we can expect to see the colossal craft take to the skies soon. SpaceX's unwavering commitment, persistence, and dedication to innovation set them apart in ways that cannot be replicated elsewhere. These principles serve as guiding stars in every aspect of SpaceX's rocket development strategy, spanning from the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy to the present-day Starship. Currently, no one dares to challenge SpaceX's dominance in the field. Following an exhilarating orbital test flight in November, SpaceX is showing no signs of slowing down. Rockets are already being transported to the launch site, indicating a sense of urgency. Before SpaceX grants clearance for a Starship rocket launch, thorough tests are conducted. These tests involve a comprehensive evaluation of the rocket's electrical systems, fuel tanks, and engines, ensuring a seamless launch without any unforeseen issues. The most recent test for Ship 28 involves a static fire test, where six powerful Raptor engines are ignited for a brief duration on the test stand. This specific test serves as a crucial step in assessing the upcoming Starship prototype's condition. Even though Starship S-28 can generate thrusts of up to 1380 tons when all six engines are fired, the focus is on ensuring both the rocket and ground support equipment remain undamaged. The post-flight analysis indicates that the test trials were successful. During the test, Starship completed a full iteration of static fire, with all six Raptor engines firing as planned. SpaceX shared this achievement in a post on social media platform X, which also featured a video capturing the highlights of the test. SpaceX is making rapid strides in preparing for IFT-3, with the recent successful static fire test of Ship 28 signaling its readiness for action. The spacecraft appears nearly set, patiently awaiting the right moment to be paired with its booster. Furthermore, positive results from subsequent tests on Ship 28's payload bay indicate continued functionality after the demanding static fire trial. However, a noteworthy observation post-test revealed a few damaged tiles falling off the spacecraft, particularly in the flap areas. While not overly concerning, given the proven resilience of the thermal protection system, TPS tiles, on the spacecraft, it is speculated that shock waves bouncing off the ground during the test may have caused vibrations in these wing tiles. It is anticipated that private inspections of the thermal protection system tiles on the wings will be conducted in the coming days, addressing any concerns. Days prior, SpaceX achieved success in the second stage spin test of Starship a critical examination ensuring the rocket's pumps can inject fuel and oxidizer into the engines during subsequent tests and at the time of launch. In another positive development, SpaceX efficiently transported the Starship Super Heavy booster to the launch site. This swift progress is noteworthy, considering it took the company three months after the first test to roll out the booster for the second test flight. While not seeking to overly praise SpaceX, it's essential to acknowledge that they stand out as the only player capable of keeping up swiftly with the pace of time. Let's draw a comparison with NASA's renowned yet expensive rocket, the Space Launch System, SLS. Since its inaugural launch at the close of 2022, there has been a notable absence of information regarding its return to testing. The prevalent narratives surrounding this rocket often feature headlines emphasizing unacceptable issues, substantial cost concerns, and a lack of transparency. Turning our attention to Blue Origin, a prominent competitor to SpaceX, it's important to note that the development of New Glenn has experienced delays, making it outdated compared to SpaceX's Starship by nearly a decade. However, the focus here is on the optimal time for Blue Origin's most powerful rocket, New Shepard. Despite its significance as a key player and revenue generator for the company, Blue Origin has struggled to return New Shepard to the skies for over a year since its last malfunction. This situation underscores SpaceX's robust development capabilities and its ability to introduce a breath of fresh air with innovative technological approaches. SpaceX's divergence from traditional and somewhat outdated methods contrasts sharply with the challenges faced by both NASA's SLS and Blue Origin's New Shepard. Furthermore, Booster 10, gearing up for its third test, has been skillfully hoisted onto the orbital launch mount by SpaceX's colossal robotic arms. 
These robotic arms, purposefully designed, serve the unique function of mid-air catching Starship and Super Heavy, eliminating the need for tall and unwieldy cranes. This innovation not only aligns with Elon Musk's promise of time-saving in future rocket launches, but also streamlines the process for enhanced efficiency. Booster 10, equipped with its heat shield and all 33 Raptors installed, is anticipated to undergo a condensed testing regimen. This may involve a cryo-proof, a 33-engine spin prime, and a subsequent 33-engine static fire before being deemed flight-ready. A distinctive movement was recently observed in this particular prototype as its grid fins exhibited activity post-test, distinguishing it from its counterparts. Upon successful completion of these critical tests, the stage is set for the pivotal milestone of stacking the Starship upper stage onto the booster. This process not only signals the hardware readiness for integrated flight test three, but also underscores the determination and precision invested in every preparation step for Starship. It serves as tangible evidence of Elon Musk and SpaceX's unwavering commitment to transforming humanity into a multi-planetary species in the not too distant future, facing regulatory hurdles. It's worth noting that when it comes to SpaceX's capabilities, there is little room for debate. Their track record suggests the potential for conducting four to five launches in 2024 alone. However, the trajectory of SpaceX often involves collaboration not only with themselves, but also with indispensable key U, S, government agencies. Even with favorable testing outcomes, SpaceX might encounter potential delays in acquiring a launch license from the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA. In the aftermath of the incident during Flight 2, the Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, has initiated an inquiry and has decided to withhold the license for future launches until SpaceX completes a thorough investigation and confirms the implementation of any necessary corrective measures. Adding to SpaceX's challenges, environmental groups have heightened scrutiny, expressing concerns about potential harm to critical habitats near rocket launch sites. On December 15th, several environmental groups lodged a new complaint regarding the environmental impacts of SpaceX Starship launches from Starbase, the company's facility in far southern Texas. The crux of the complaint alleges that the FAA failed to adequately review the environmental impacts of the first Starship launch before issuing a revised license for the second launch that occurred on November 18th. This revised licensing process included an environmental assessment conducted by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, FWS, regarding a pad deluge system. SpaceX had installed this system to prevent damages similar to those experienced during the inaugural launch. Notably, the FWS deemed this pad deluge system to have a negligible environmental impact. Nevertheless, environmental groups are challenging both the FAA and the Fish and Wildlife Service, arguing that they failed in their obligations under the National Environmental Policy Act, NEPA, to conduct a thorough evaluation of the environmental consequences associated with Starship launches. They contend that the FAA overlooked the impacts of the Starship Super Heavy launch program by omitting a supplementary NEPA analysis. Furthermore, they assert that the FWS also fell short in its evaluation, concentrating solely on the deluge system and neglecting the potential environmental repercussions of debris falling from the April launch. Despite the apparent success of the deluge system in preventing further pad damage, environmental groups argue that this does not absolve the oversight in assessing broader environmental implications. Criticizing the lack of an in-depth environmental review and expressing concerns about SpaceX continuing to launch the world's largest rockets that have experienced repeated explosions, Jared Margolis, a senior attorney at the Center for Biological Diversity, stated in a released statement about the new complaint, SpaceX should not be given free reign to use this amazing area as a sacrifice zone. While environmental groups criticize the government for what they perceive as insufficient measures, to protect the environment from Starship launches, the anticipation for the third flight in the first quarter of 2023 remains high. In a presentation to a local group in Brownsville on December 12th, Kathy Luters, former NASA Associate Administrator for Space Operations and current General Manager of Starbase for SpaceX, shared her expectation for the next Starship launch to take place early in 2024. She conveyed, it would be great if we were in the first quarter. According to a report, she mentioned, Elon obviously would probably say the end of December, but I don't think we'll get there. What do you think? Can SpaceX break another record and launch the Starship once more before the year ends? Please let us know in the comments below.